Hi, I'm Vit Moisish. I work as a SC Linux user space maintainer at Red Hat and I'm here to talk to you about one of our team's latest projects, Decentralized SC Linux Policy, or Custom SC Linux Policy Modules Done Right. The agenda is pretty simple, so I'm not even gonna bother you reading it aloud. Let's get to it. What is DSP? It's a project to decompose monolithic SC Linux policy and align it with projects and products code base. Wow, that's a mouthful. So let's pick it apart. Hopefully most of you know that SC Linux is an implementation of Linux security modules. And it's aimed at confining processes in their own space so that even if they get exploited, they can only access the data they need for their normal operation. Uh, so basically, SC Linux is protecting other processes and the host system from consequences of exploits. Now to do so, um, it's using security policies. These policies are basically files describing all the access that um, a process may need to work properly. Usually they're all delivered together uh, inside a Linux policy package. And this project is aimed at actually taking them from uh, the policy package and uh, shipping them directly with the software they're corresponding uh, with their designed to confine. Why would we want to do that? For that, um, let's have a look at how a new feature um, gets developed and released uh, in a project confined by SC Linux. So uh, after it gets developed, uh, hopefully the, the new feature gets tested with SC Linux and any policy issues get reported to a Linux policy component and uh, eventually there is a fix for the issue uh, which gets retested and maybe they, uh, this issue was uh, hiding another one so this cycle can actually repeat and when, it, when that's done the feature can be safely released but um, it can happen that the updated policy gets to the user after the updated version of the product itself. Um, this can be uh, due to the fact that the user has uh, outdated policy or uh, maybe uh, the, the product was released uh, um, in, with a different schedule and therefore it got out sooner. But in, uh, in either case, uh, the user can end up with issues with the software. So um, this project is trying to get the policy closer to the developers and uh, integrate it into the development process of new features. Right, let's have a look at all the benefits. Firstly, uh, as I said, the security policy is always up to date. So this actually means more stable functionality because none of the features uh, should be blocked by the security policy. This can also mean um, that the new functionality uh, doesn't have to wait for a Linux policy package, uh, the updated a Linux policy package to be released. This is especially important uh, in projects wh which have different release cycles uh, than a Linux policy and therefore uh, there might be longer wait. Secondly, the thread surface is decreased. Um, this is due to the fact that uh, the policy, uh, when it's maintained by people who actually understand the software and all its needs uh, can tighten the policy uh, to be as strict as possible while still allowing all the features of the software. So this ends up benefiting the user because uh, it can mitigate or even completely block some exploits. 
another benefit is that um, well-defined policy can actually help you find issues with the software because uh, SE Linux uh, is reporting any uh, access it blocks and um, it can uh, therefore report uh, any misbehavior of your application. So it can help you find uh, issues in your code. This is actually happening even without this project, but to a lesser degree, obviously, because the the policy is not uh, so um, well tuned. And also the policy fixes can be better and can be delivered faster. They can be better because as the product maintainer, you understand uh, the recent changes that took place in the software and um, can tailor the policy changes to them. So um, um, since you have uh, all the information, you can uh, deliver the fix way faster. And also uh, since the policy is delivered together with the uh, product, um, it's always up to date. Okay, let's move to features. What is actually part of this project? First off, we have a packaging guide. That's a step-by-step -step guide to uh, package your custom policy. I'll talk a bit more in depth about it at the end of the presentation. So let's skip it for now. Um, second, we have a guideline for a Linux policy API. Uh, this is a document that can give you an idea of what policy changes you can expect in given time frame. So for example, when new classes, types or interfaces can be introduced and when the policy should be stable. Uh, the document is targeted at RHEL, but can give you an idea about Fedora as well. A uh, third uh, feature is our SC troubleshoot bug reporting. Uh, SC troubleshoot is our bug reporting uh, uh, tool and uh, also a troubleshooting tool uh, for SC Linux denials. And uh, this new feature uh, allows it to help users uh, file bugs against the component that actually shipped the policy and not against uh, a Linux policy. So this way you get uh, the bugs directly uh, and faster than uh, you would before. And the, uh, the last, our latest feature is a test suite. It can help you identify policy rules that are too, uh, too benevolent um, maybe find uh, policy writing practices that are not ideal and can end up um, um, causing issues in the future and also some packaging issues. Let's get to concerns you might have before uh, taking a part in this project. So this project is completely opt-in. We're not forcing anyone to take part and it's not actually right for everybody. So uh, you need to uh, keep that in mind. Um, here is a few of the projects that already adopted their uh, Linux policies and are working with us to improve them. Uh, we are aware that um, it might be um, hard to start maintaining uh, an SE Linux policy, uh, something that you might not be familiar with, uh, but it's not like we are shutting the door and leaving you um, on your own. Uh, a Linux team will still be in consulting role and um, we will uh, review any PRs, pull requests you might have, um, help you troubleshoot and just we're willing to help. So um, shoot us an email uh, if you need anything. Okay, if you decide that this project is interesting, what do you do uh, to take part? First, have a look at the packaging guide. As I said, it's the step-by-step guide and should give you everything you need to package your custom policy. I'll try to, try to sum up 
the steps now. Um, one of the really important steps at the beginning is to let us know that you're interested and uh, what exactly uh, you, you want uh, to do with the policy. This way we can start a conversation and determine if this project is actually right for you. Second, you need to prepare uh, policy sources. So uh, it's usually possible to adopt a module from a Linux policy uh, targeted package, but if not, uh, if there's no module for you, uh, for, for your uh, product, then uh, you might need to create a new policy. Uh, we, have a, we have some tools that can help you um, start with the policy writing. Uh, for example, a Linux policy uh, generate will generate a um, basic policy given um, a binary and some more details about the project. And as I said, you can direct any questions or uh, reviews at a Linux team. After that's done, you can verify the compatibility of your policy with any target platform. So um, I'm mostly talking about older Fedora versions or maybe RHEL releases that might have slightly different base policy than the latest Fedora. After that's done, you just choose appropriate repository for the policy sources and um, then you can package them. Uh, the packaging guide should help you here. Uh, it contains uh, even example make files, uh, spec files and all the steps you, you would need to, to package the, the policy properly. Uh, the policy can be shipped in a sub package uh, of your component or uh, it can be uh, completely standalone and then linked to uh, your package by conditional requires. Uh, the conditional requires is here uh, in order not to pollute, for example, containers and other uh, minimal systems that do not uh, have a Linux enabled. After that, you just create a PR in Fedora list Git and ask us for a review. Okay, let's say that this project is actually not for you and um, but you're still maybe maintaining um, some project that deals with SE Linux or maybe you deal with SE Linux in an, another way. Here are two th really important things for us that you can do even without this project. Please run your test with uh, tests with SE Linux in permissive mode and collect any AVC messages. This way we get enough time to fix any issues and uh, your project will end up working properly. Um, also, when you're reporting a bugs, please give us some context. So, uh, for example, if you're reporting uh, an, um, a policy bug that's, uh, uh, that's causing some of the functionality of your project not to work. Uh, you can give us details about what changed recently in the software. Maybe you started using different library or you need some, some more uh, access uh, for another reasons. But these information are really valuable for us and will uh, significantly speed up the uh, the fixing uh, of, of the issue. Um, if you're maybe um, just trying to use some software and uh, you encounter a policy issue, uh, try to give us more details about uh, your configuration and uh, what uh, you were trying to do um, when the issue occurred. Obviously, big thanks to everyone who's already doing these things because it's really helping, guys. Okay, that's it from me. And if you have any questions, shoot.